Good morning. Today is Sunday, June 14th, 2020. Solemnity of the Most Holy Blood and Body of Christ. On behalf of St. Juliana Falconeri Catholic Church in Fullerton, California, welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. The Mass readings today can be found at usccb.org. You can also find the readings linked at our parish website, which is stjulianachurch.org. We invite you to participate prayerfully this morning as Father Michael Pontarelli celebrates the Mass. Together at the table of plenty, the Lord's table. We celebrate the Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. We've gathered together on this feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of our Lord, to celebrate the Holy Mass. Let us remember the way that we've worthily received the bread of life and become the body of Christ, a leaven in our community, and give thanks. For the times we've failed Christ and one another, we tell Almighty God that we are sorry and we promise to live better. You
O God, who in this most wonderful sacrament have left us as a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with you in the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, remember how for 40 years now, the Lord, your God, has directed all of your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna a food unknown to you and to your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of that land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless land, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not our participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf, the word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. And so we come to June 14th, a bit of ways from March 14th when this was beginning. June 14th, for those that remember in the United States of America, today is the holiday called, anyone, 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 Flag Day. It's called Flag Day because we inaugurated the flag on this day in 1777. We also founded the United States Army on June 14th in 1775. Isn't that interesting? And it just happens that today, June 14th, is a Sunday of the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ. A lot of the rest of the world celebrates it on June 11th, but we've moved it to June 14th. And it would be in the old calendar that instead of ordinary time, we started marking church time by the Sundays after Pentecost, remember. All of that you have to remember. There's most important thing to remember. 
that the Eucharist is the real presence of our Lord. Nothing less than that and everything that that means. Let me take you through a little bit of a journey here. A sign, a symbol, and the real presence of the Lord in the Holy Eucharist. A sign is a sensible reality. It's made out of something, we see it, it exists, it really is there. The sign that says Freeway 57, it's actually pointing away from itself to another reality. That's what signs do. They point away from themselves to something else. The barber pole points away from itself to the barber or anything else, points away from what the sign is saying to some direction. It gives us direction to something else. We don't get all involved in signs. Maybe if you're a barber and some vandals have destroyed your barber pole, you get upset, but otherwise the sign points away from itself. A symbol is a sensible reality, but it participates in what it represents. The flag, it's a sensible reality. It's really there and it participates. It involves all of us in an experience. And so when somebody's burning the flag, we say it's rather not the, not the best thing you can do with that flag. It participates in an experience of 13 original colonies and now 50 states, all right there in our flag. That's why it's important to us. If you ever had the opportunity to travel to another land or live somewhere else, you saw all of their flags. I, I lived in Great Britain for a year as, as a student, and I saw the Union Jack all over the place. Not the Union, yeah, the, all over the place, the Union Jack. And I thought, that's a nice flag. But then it came to the United States flag. All of a sudden, that's my flag. And don't any of you say anything about it because it's the best flag on the planet, represents my country. Or another experience, you maybe saw Air Force One somewhere else on another country. And you think, whether you like the president or not, that's the traveling White House. And it stands for something really, really neat. And so you're there in Air Force One, wow, what a neat thing. It's my president and my country abroad. It's a sensible reality. It participates in something bigger than itself. Your wedding bands, sensible reality. And when it's sort of left behind, um, honey, are you not wearing this for some reason? And you get all involved in it because it really says the two of us are one. That circle that's not broken it participates in something greater than itself. And then we get to the Holy Eucharist. Neither a sign pointing away from itself or a symbol participating, but something that's really beyond both. The real presence of our Lord, really there, present in the form of bread, transformed, transfigured, completely different, from what it started out to be, the body of Christ. And we take it in as life-giving food. During the pandemic, I suppose you've made bread. I've got to tell you, I, I opened the other day the 35th pound of flour that I've bought, along with the two pounds of yeast that I bought. I've been making bread and pizza and challah. I've been enjoying it. We participate in this activity. We invite people in to share the bread. If you're Italian, you shouldn't be because we're the best people on the planet. And on Sundays, there's nothing funny about that. On Sundays, we gather for pasta. You see, the pasta is the vehicle that gets the family and the friends together. And once you're together, it's without end. Loud voices, soft voices, crying, laughter, every emotion, and you start over again. It's the homemade wine that really is harsh, but you drink it anyway because grandpa made it. And it's the food that grandma put together, or maybe mom and dad. And it has names. We used to do this often at my mom's house, and how I miss it. Mom made the best gnocchi on the planet. 
the secret instant mashed potatoes. And you don't have to rice them. But it gathered us together. And one of my former students and his family was there one day and said, what is that? What's gnocchi? What does it mean? That. Actually, it means eye. Like orakete means ear. It has names. You see, Moses had manna. Well, what is it? It's the, I don't know what it is. That's what manna means. I don't know what it is. Eat it anyway, kid. Otherwise, you're going to starve and die. You know, it's, you don't have a menu. So eat it. They ate it because it sustained them. But the Eucharist doesn't only sustain us, it super sustains us. It brings us to eternal life. That gnocchi, that orecchetti, that pizza brought us life. But the Eucharist brings extraordinary life, eternal life, super life. The way that God is not only wise, but super wise. The way that God is not only powerful, but super powerful. The way that that food in the Eucharist is not just food, but superfood, and nothing less than that. Flannery O'Connor was quite right. If it's just a symbol, to hell with it. You see, it goes beyond symbol. It goes beyond everything, because it's real. Really Jesus present. And we take him in. And the idea of St. Augustine, you take in Christ to become Christ. Let your amen, yes it is, become a reality in your life and change your life so that people live as Christ. It's no mistake that Corpus Christi, the many, many cities that are named Corpus Christi, obviously a Catholic foundation. Sacramento, our capital, a Catholic foundation. The sacrament, Sacramento. Let's not forget it. And all that it means. The place where the body gathers, the body politic. The place where things happen. The place of activity and super activity. Thus we have the altar table. Thus we have the church. Where you become the body of Christ, I do too, the church a sacrament itself, way beyond just an assembly, way beyond just a congregation. We're baptized into it, and you can't get out of it. And it nourishes us, one another. That's why we missed you all. That's why you fasted from the Eucharist. And now you've got to come back to it, to the table of the Lord. Today, gather around your own tables and celebrate family. Gather around the table of the Lord and celebrate sacrament, a moonshot different. Gather and celebrate. Become the people that you say you are. St. Thomas Aquinas called it food for the journey. And so in our funeral prayers, the closing prayer after communion, we say that the Lord left us food for the journey. Nourished by it, may the good servant who's now died reach eternal life. We receive food for the journey to eternal life. We receive something far different than just a meal. We receive the body of Christ. May we become the good people that we celebrate, Christ himself who suffered for us. We take him in and we are holy. Receiving the sacrament, we go forward to be the body of Christ. May the places of Corpus Christi, Sacra Sacramento, and St. Juliana be made holy today and always by his presence and yours. God bless. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to God our Father, who knows our needs, we present these petitions to him for ourselves, our church, and the people of the world. For Pope Francis, our bishop, priests, and all who serve the church, may the Lord strengthen them in their mission of bringing the light of Christ to a weary world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders and all who help formulate public policy, may the Holy Spirit guide them in all that they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the countries of the world, may God bring them peace and security. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this gathered assembly, May the love and truth that God has poured into our hearts sustain us in all that we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who so serve the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, that they will be filled with wisdom and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James Molitor and the parishioners of St. Juliana Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Ministry of Word and Sacrament at Blessed Sacrament Parish in Westminster in our own diocese, and for the legislation, uh, legislators of the state of California in Sacramento, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant them according to your will and our need. As always, we make them to you through Christ our Lord, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we present here. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for all ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so, we approach the table of this most wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, with all creatures of heaven and earth, a new song in adoration is sung, and we, with the hosts of angels, continually cry out and without end acclaim, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We will pray for that, O Lord, and for the resurrection of our Lord, our Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother bishops, and all who minister in your name. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your great mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Juliana, and Peregrine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and using the words that Jesus taught us, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. I only say the word that my soul shall be healed. Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
A prayer to Christ crucified in time of pestilence and contagion. Dear Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, our secure and unfailing hope, have mercy on us and deliver us from every evil. We beg you to overcome the scourge of this fearful virus which is spreading from place to place. We beg you to heal the sick, to protect the healthy, and to work for those and to support those who work for the health care of all. Show us your face of mercy, O Lord, and save us in your great love. With the intercession of Holy Mary, your mother and ours, ever close to us in our needs, Lord Jesus, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. During the course of house arrest, we've had a little more than 100 live stream videos now, and that's due to a huge amount of thanks to Tom Sines and his wife, Blanca, and Yolanda Deutsch, the wife of Deacon Chuck, and Bob Dieterle, and now some others that are volunteering. They've done this along with me for more than a hundred um, videos, and we couldn't thank you enough. Thank you all. Our Sunday Masses, um, along with the Holy Week services, uh, have not limped along, but rather been just a, a nice marathon with the five voices and their director, um, Mr. Todd Helm, and Esther Park, the organist. You've gotten us through with liturgy, and we thank you for the support that you've been to us. Thank you very much, the five of you. We appreciate it. Now, maybe, I don't know if it's the video folks that I need to talk to or the, um, because of audio, or the, the singers, but I was at dinner last night with um, a family. Of, I, I, taught, um, <laughs> I taught the one that's now called Dad, I can't believe it, and his, I saw his wife and his daughters, and they claim that it's, I sound like I'm saying the misery of faith instead of the mystery of faith. I don't think it's either the sound or the, um, the choir, but you know, that dad graduated from UCLA and that's the best he could do, I'm sure of it. And for those that were at table at mom's house when you had the gnocchi, Tom, I hope you remember that you did that and I did it back to you. We're gonna continue the live stream every morning at 6 a.m. Um, and the Sundays certainly at 9 o'clock. If you are unable to get a ticket or a reservation for the Sunday Masses, you must have a reservation. They open between 9 a.m. on Tuesday morning and they close at 9 a.m. on Thursday morning. If you fail to get a reservation and there's no seat available in the church, if you've attended Mass by live stream, you may come at the end of Mass and receive Holy Communion with everyone else who's receiving Holy Communion at the end of Mass. And if there's anything else that I need to tell you, the church is ventilated and perfectly safe as far as I know. Just look at the candles, the way the flames are flickering and that palm tree. From time to time, I think you can fly a kite in the, the sanctuary space. And it's good to have you all back, and especially maybe that voice of the reader, the Louisville slugger. Um, I, I, I missed hearing that drawl, and um, I think you missed the Kentucky Derby too. But it, it'll come, as all things do, to those who wait. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. <laughs>